Welcome you all to another discussion on pearls to secure a distinction in medicine loan case. So as we discussed earlier, medicine loan case is one of the most important components in the clinical examination. And to secure a distinction in medicine or a good pass in medicine, it is essential to get an overall good mark for the medicine loan case as well. So today also we have Dr. Kavishka, one of the recently passed out medical graduates who will be role playing as a medical student. And he will be presenting me a loan case and I'll be asking the questions in the same way we do in the final exam. And at the end of his answers, I will be giving him a feedback. So today the discussion is about a patient with a unilateral weakness. Of your history and examination findings. My patient is Mr. Bandara, a 50 year old school teacher from Peratania who is a diabetic and a hypertensive for last five years with a poor disease control, presented with acute onset, right sided body weakness to the ETU with a facial droop within 30 minutes of symptom onset. He is a current smoker with 20 pack years and a heavy ethanol consumer. After admission, he underwent an urgent scan of his brain and he was given a special intravenous medication over one hour. He still has residual right-sided weakness but can walk with support. He is able to swallow with no bladder and bowel involvement. On examination, he is not pale. He has santhalesma with acanthosis significance. There is no any carotid bruit. Pulse rate is 80 beats per minute and it is irregular. His blood pressure is 160 over 100 millimeters mercury with no murmurs. He has right sided hemiparesis with right upper motor neuron type 7 to nerve pulse. Good. So, in this patient, Mr. Bandara, what are the problems that you have identified? He has right, no, left sided cerebrovascular accident, atrial fibrillation, diabetes mellitus hypertension, smoking and heavy ethanol consumption. Well, making a problem list is something that one should master. It is always important to have a good list of problems because that will help to organize your thoughts and streamline the rest of the discussion. And here, the first problem Kavishka presented was a CBA. So it is important not to use the words like CBA because cerebrovascular accident, there are no accidents in the brain. So, you can use the word as a stroke. So, a sample problem list would be Mr. Bandara's acute medical problem is a left sided stroke. And he is probably in atrial fibrillation given the irregular, irregular pulse, but need to, con need to confirm with an ECG with a high chat bus score. He has poorly controlled type 2 diabetes mellitus on maximum oral hypoglycemic agents with both macro and microvascular complications. He has long standing hypertension on three antihypertensives with poor control. He is a heavy ethanol consumer with features of dependency. And he is a current active smoker with 30 pack years. And his main social problem would be impact on his job as a teacher given the residual right sided weakness and his right hand dominance. Okay, good. So, what do you think about his right sided weakness? at his initial presentation. So if you happen to be the doctor who sees the patient for the first time, what are the possibilities that you would like to entertain? Uh, acute ischemic stroke or any acute bleed. So at the end of the history and examination, it is obvious that this is a stroke. But in this question, what we asked was, at the initial presentation, what are the possibilities? So as you know, he's a diabetic, he's a hypertensive and he's a ethanol consumer. So this sort of a patient coming with the unilateral weakness at the initial presentation, there are so many possibilities that we expect a house officer to consider. So it could be an ischemic stroke or a transient ischemic attack, as well as it could be an intracranial bleed. And at the same time, as is a diabetic, hypoglycemia can present with a focal neurological deficit. And it could be hemiplegic migraine. It could be a seizure and this weakness may be post weakness and sometimes it could be a CNS infection like a focal cerebritis or a cerebral abscess. Even it could be a functional cause once we exclude all the organic causes. 
Right, so at the end of history and examination, in this particular patient, what do you think is the most likely cause? So I think it is an ischemic stroke. So what are the things in favor of an ischemic stroke in this patient? So because the patient is in atrial fibrillation and he did not have a headache with the initial presentation. He is a diabetic and a smoker as well. Yes, I agree. But the ideal answer would be I think Mr. Bandara's initial presentation is in favor of an ischemic stroke. He has multiple vascular risk factors such as he has poorly controlled diabetes, he has poorly controlled hypertension and he is a smoker. In addition, I found that he is in atrial fibrillation which increases the risk of an embolic stroke. And also he did not have any symptoms suggestive of an intracranial bleed such as acute onset headache or fits at the presentation. So the overall presentation is more in favor of a ischemic stroke rather than a hemorrhagic stroke. Okay, so if you are the doctor in the ETU receiving this patient, what would you do? I will take a history and examine the patient and then I will do a CT and if there is no bleed and no contraindication for thrombolysis, I will thrombolyze the patient. Well, I agree with that answer, but you have already seen this patient and examined this patient. So what we would expect from an ideal house officer to identify this patient as a potentially thrombolizable person within the thrombolytic window following an acute ischemic stroke. So the ideal answer we would expect is, here the time is break, so I would act fast and I would take a targeted history and do a focused examination. Where I will try to establish the onset of symptoms. I will document the exact time of his neurological deficit. Secondly, I will consider the possible stroke mimics in this patient. Say for instance, whether he had any headache or fits preceding the event and I will check a random blood sugar. And then I will inquire into contraindications for thrombolysis. And then I will do a targeted examination and determine and document the neurological deficit. And then I will arrange an urgent NCCT brain to exclude an intracranial bleed. So what are the indications to consider thrombolysis in this patient? And how would you thrombolyze him? So if there are no any contraindications for thrombolysis, there is no bleeding in the CT and if the patient presented within uh, four and a half hours a bit, uh, from the initial presentation, uh, I will thrombolyze this patient with peltic place. Right, so I agree with that answer, but the ideal answer would be the indication for thrombolysis would be an ischemic stroke with a measurable neurological deficit, preferably within 3 hours, but which can extend up to 4.5 hours of presentation. And you should have excluded all the contraindications for thrombolysis. So here the neurological deficit should be measured and documented. So a score, a special score is used called NIHSS score to objectively document the neurological deficit. So after excluding contraindications for thrombolysis and if Mr. Valdar is a candidate for thrombolysis, I would explain the risks and benefits to him and get the informed consent from the patient for the thrombolysis. So ideally in this case, the low to medial time should be less than one hour. And the thrombolytic agent for acute ischemic stroke is antibase. So the recommended dose is 0.9 mg per kg with a maximum dose of 90 mg. And 10% of this dose need to be given over a 1 minute and the rest 90% can be given as an infusion over a 1 hour period. So during thrombolysis, I will monitor the patient very closely about the symptoms of headache or any worsening neurology. And I will check his lab pressure, pulse rate, respirate rate, etc. And during this period, I will avoid any invasive procedures such as getting an NG tube in or catheterizing the patient. So, assume you are considering thrombolysing Mr. Bandar, but then you check his blood pressure and that is 210 by 110. What would you do about his blood pressure? So in this patient, a blood pressure value of 200 over 110 is a relative contraindication for thrombolysis. So I will start him on antihypertensives to reduce the blood pressure. Right. So the ideal answer would be, given the blood pressure of 210 by 110 is a relative contraindication for thrombolysis. 
So my aim is to bring down the blood pressure to 185 by 110 before giving the thrombolytic agent. And to maintain the blood pressure below 180 and 105 for the first 24 hours after the thrombolysis. So I would consider intravenous antihypertensive such as intravenous labetalol or hydralazine to bring down the blood pressure. Right, so assume now we have thrombolyzed the patient and it was successful and you receive the patient into your ward. So how would you manage him in the first 24 hours after thrombolysis? So I will assess him neurologically. Uh, I will look for any complication of the stroke such as swallowing and bladder involvement. Then I will repeat the CT and start the patient on aspirin and statin. Right, so I agree with the answer but the ideal answer would contain Following thrombolysis, I will closely monitor Mr. Bandara, preferably in a high dependence unit, with continuous monitoring of his neurological status and vital parameters. I will arrange another non control CT brain in 24 hours time to exclude any hemorrhagic transformation. And high dose statin, atomostatin 40 mg will be started at the initial presentation and he will be started on a single antiplatelet, either aspirin or propylagrel, after the repeat CT in 24 hours time after excluding the hemorrhagic transformation. I will maintain adequate hydration, glycemic control, temperature control and bladder and bubble care will be given to the patient. A swallowing assessment will be carried out and if he is at risk of aspiration, I will arrange an NG tube. And early physiotherapy and speech therapy is very important in the rehabilitation of this patient. Right. So what further investigations would you like to arrange for him? I will arrange a fasting blood sugar, HbA1c, a lipid profile, ECG, echo and a carotid duplex, also ESR and ANA tests. So if you are asked this question, your answer should be tailor-made to your patient. Answers like ESR and ANA in this elderly male with multiple vascular risk factors would not be relevant in this context. But if it's a young patient, young female with ischemic stroke, yes I agree, ESR and, ESR and ANA would be important. So here the answer we would expect is, I found Mr. Bandar in atrial fibrillation so I will confirm it with an ACG and I will arrange a transthoracic echo to look for cardiac source of thromboembolism. I will arrange a carotid duplex to look for any significant carotid artery stenosis. Mr. Bandara's glycemic control will be assessed by an HbA1c and I will arrange a lipid profile to see his lipid levels. And also as he is a heavy smoker, I will arrange a full blood count to look at the hemoglobin to exclude polycythemia. Right, so when you are planning to discharge Mr. Bandar, what measures will you take to prevent him getting another stroke? I will continue aspirin and statin. I will optimize his blood pressure and glycemic control. I will consider starting warfarin. So here, the question is about secondary prophylaxis. So in Mr. Bandar, I will continue aspirin and high intensity statin as secondary prophylaxis. In addition, he is in atrial fibrillation which carries a high risk of embolic stroke and he has a high CHADVASC score. So I will discuss the risks and benefits of warfarin or anticoagulation with the patient and I will consider starting warfarin. If the carotid duplex shows clinically significant carotid artery stenosis, I will consider referring him to vascular surgeons for carotid endarterectin. Meanwhile, I will optimize his diabetic control and blood pressure control. And importantly, I will advise him on quitting smoking. Well, uh, so on day 3, Mr. Bandar is in the ward and you find him a bit confused and less responsive. What are the possibilities that you would consider as a house officer? Uh, sir, I will consider a probability of a bleed into the stroke, hypoglycemia or another stroke. Yes. So, having low GCS on day 3 of admission after the acute ischemic stroke could be due to many reasons. So, we expect a house officer to have a very broad approach to see what's the possibility. So, hemorrhagic transformation of the stroke is a possibility. In addition, he is in atrial fibrillation, so he can have multiple cardiac emboli, which can give rise to another stroke in a different vascular territory. 
and developing cerebral edema is another possibility but here it is usually an early complication after the stroke so on day 3 causing low GCS cerebral edema is less likely and he is a diabetic patient so this confusion and less responsiveness could be due to a either hyperglycemic episode or a severe hypoglycemia and also when someone is having a stroke it can give rise to syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion or rarely cerebral salt wasting leading to symptomatic hyponatremia and after the stroke brain tissues can be irritable and sometimes he may be having a seizure making the current presentation and these seizures are always need not to be generalized tonic chronic fits sometimes people can have non-convulsive seizures and sometimes they can go into non-convulsive status leading to low GCS and also low GCS in this patient could be due to a sepsis something like aspiration pneumonia or catheter associated UTI giving rise to delirium okay so that brings to the end of today's discussion so I have already uploaded a long case discussion about acute chest pain in the channel and if you have not already watched it please go and check it and uh, in the future I will be uploading similar long cases and if you want to stay tuned to the channel please subscribe and if you have any comments with regard to today's video or previous videos please leave a comment and don't hesitate to give your opinions on what long cases that need to be discussed in the future okay I will see you in the next video good luck